Well, good afternoon, my friends. You have found Needlebug, and my name is Karen, and I thought today we would do a bit of a stitch with me. Haven't done one for a little bit, I don't think. Days are running together. I get confused. <laughs> I'm confused when I did the last one. It might have been a while, but thought we'd do one today. Uh, and I thought I'd pull out Autumn Church today since I've been working on uh, Sir Frederick Frosty, also known as Fred, for most of the week. And he has gotten quite a bit of stitching done. And I have made some very decent progress on Fred. So I thought, okay, oh fooey, when you start a thread, you want it to start. Uh, so I thought I'd pull out Autumn Church today and uh, give this one a little, little bit of love. So I think we have everything set up correctly this time on the recording. This is... Uh, yeah, when I can get this thread started. This will be take two. Um, I didn't like the way the color was showing up the first time that I started recording this. I was looking like everything was gray and everything is not gray. I mean, it's a lot of dark colors. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But um, it's not all dark colors. So we want to park this one down here. Yes, folks, I have changed my mind again. Uh, not that I'm in love with parking, because that is not the case. But I have changed my mind for one very simple reason. When I, before I settled on this count fabric and all of this stuff, and I was doing all my <laughs> starts and restarts, and then there were restarts, and then there were restarts, when I got to this section, what was happening was I was messing up every blessed time. Every time I was making a mistake somewhere, and then there's a ton of colors in here, and it was just truly too hard to tell where the mistake was. And I ended up doing a lot of, well, you know that four-letter word, frog. The frog came to visit quite frequently. So, as I got down to this part, and you can see I was doing uh, cross country within the diagonal, but as I'm getting down to this part, I'm going, you know what? Maybe that's just not the best idea. Maybe I okay, i'm I'm just looking here. Maybe I just need to um, for lack of a better way to put it, bite the bullet and park. And maybe the best way at this moment in time is to park row by row, stitch by stitch. So that I don't keep making that same or those same mistakes and then going, oh my God, here we go with the frog again. 
because the frog is not is not my friend. Now I have already noticed and I don't know if you can see it um, because I really have just started doing this but I'm doing I have done this row and I'm working on this row and I will say beyond a doubt that stitches are much much neater and uniform and look a lot nicer when you work parking row at a time either row at a time or stitch at a time when you're always coming up in a clean or almost clean hole and you're going down in the dirty holes your stitches always look whoops always look nicer just my opinion yes does it make me crazy yeah it surely does do I get <laughs> annoyed with it that I switch to another method yes I do whoops For right now, though, for right now, oh, I parked it here. Okay. Oh, my goodness. See, talking and <laughs> I get myself confused. <laughs> ah. For right now, though, I think it is just the absolute way to go. Is it a lot of needle threading? Yes, it certainly is. Are these ballpoint needles sometimes difficult to thread? Yes, they are. However, is it going to save me in the long run some grief? and aggravation and frustration and all of those things? I think so. At least till I at least till I get through this part. And you know, it may just be the way I go on this one. It might just be my method of choice for this particular project. And it, like I said, it's not that I'm stitching on it every day because I'm not, because my priority this year, uh, I'm not gonna say goal because I never, I never follow through with goals. I don't know why I would make them. I'm choosing not to make them and right now I'm saying my priority this year is to get the Christmas stockings finished. Now, <laughs> you can all take bets on how long that's going to last. Because will it? Geez, I don't know. <laughs> will I get, will I do good for a little bit? And then say, yeah, no, I want to work on what I want to work on. And, you know, it's it's not a rush for these stockings to be done. And it isn't. And would I rather be working on X, Y, or Z? Yes. And then, you know me. I flit around. forgetting to no there we go 
I flit around. I am forever, ever changing my mind. I don't know. It's just the way we roll here. <laughs> oh, and I probably make you guys crazy going, okay, what's she up to this time? However, it's fun to kind of keep you guessing because you never know what you're going to find when you come on here. It's like, okay, is she stitching cross country today? Is she stitching parking? Is she going on the diagonal? Is she going in columns? You never quite know. So it's always a guess. <laughs> But isn't that what makes life interesting? So today and for now, it's uh, parking, zigzagging down through the, the rows. Yes, it's a lot of threading. Oh, but I have to show you. Wait till I reach for it here. For those times when it's very hard to thread my needle, I found this threader. Look at that. Oops, there you go. It's a wire threader. It's wooden, shaped like a pen or a pencil with the threader and if you are done for the day and don't want to put this cap back on to protect it you can take this out take this out like this and turn it around and put this inside I see that there's a little crack in there. Oh, there's one on that side too, but that's okay. So yeah, so then it just goes in like this and it's protected. I thought this was just too darn cool. And it goes in my, in the um, ballpoint needles just fine because it's just a thin just a thin wire and it's wonderful so i will link in the drop box where i got it i got it on etsy and i can't remember the name of the shop it's something woodworking but yes i really kind of no i really do like it and i've used it several times um, when I have trouble threading the, uh, these ballpoint needles. So maybe I'll have to use it the next time. Yeah, I'm using a ballpoint needle now, so I'll have to use it the next time that I have to thread this needle. And there's only one stitch of that color and there's more of this one that's just kind of why I have this needle threaded and I'm kind of keeping on going here to the end of this this row okay so that means I've done whoops yes I'm back on pattern keeper folks one, two, done all of those. Um, yeah, I switched back and forth. This particular pattern I had in pattern. Well, no, I had it in markup too. So, yeah, I, I'm as fickle with which 
app I use as I am with which way I stitch. <laughs> Would you expect anything any different? I like them equally as well. And I use, um, I'm using Stitch Pal to keep track of where I'm at and uh, calculate a approximate finish date. We don't even want to know the finish date for this one. We have, we don't, do not want to know that. <laughs> so let's, let's show you how this threader works. So you flip it around and you put that in. Okay. And then you, this is the, put the wire through the needle. Okay. And this is one of the ballpoint needles. Okay. And I want my thread here. And then I just got to get closer to the end here. <laughs> Put my thread through the wire like so. It's a little hard to see. Okay. Put your thread through the wire and then just take your needle and pull it off and it pulls your thread right through. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. If it's the last time you're going to use it for the day, you can flip it around and put it inside. If not, you can just put the cap on and uh, there you have it. Does it take, add a couple of seconds to your, your stitching? Yes, it does. Does it make your life a little easier? Yes, it does. However, stitching is not a race. Stitching is for pure enjoyment. At least, at least that's how I look at it. If I don't ever get this finished, well, I would hope that there's, if I don't ever get this finished and I'm not here anymore, I would hope that there's someone out there who would want to finish it. I have already left my husband know that if something ever happens to me before something happens to him, that he's just to call my friend Barb and she will know what to do with everything. Now, what I would like is for my friends to be able to pick one piece of my finished pieces that they would like to keep, if they would like to keep one. First, though, my daughter gets to keep the ones that she wants. Then any of my friends that would like can pick if they want one. And then the rest can be donated somewhere or, you know, really, I, I, I mean, what am I going to know? I don't really much <laughs> have a preference. Um, but as far as the supplies, I would hope that um, stitching friends would also want to share would also want to share those. So there we go. 
I told him, just don't you dare throw everything away. <laughs> I said, don't you even think about it. <laughs> there is, wow, there's a lot of junk. Over, no, well, not junk. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff over here in this little in this little stitching room. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I need a little bit of a, a little bit of coffee here. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And then again, I'll never know what they do. And seriously, <laughs> Does it really matter? Does it really matter? Because, you know, the only thing that matters is that you and you stitch, how to stitch what you love and love what you stitch. And be happy with your result. The only one you have to please is yourself. As long as you are happy with what you've stitched and the way you've stitched it and the amount of time you spent stitching it, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter if um, the only standard you need to, how can I say this? The only standard you need to live up to is the one that makes you happy. And that just goes back to why I keep saying there's no rules because there aren't. There's no cross stitch police. Does your back have to be perfectly neat? No, not, no. Are you happy with it the way you've stitched? And if that answer is yes, then good. Then that's as it should be. You know, do you use knots? If you want to use knots, use knots. You know, I would say if that's what works for you, as long for myself, and I'm just inserting my own opinion here, as long as it's not a big clunky knot there's nothing wrong with that if that's what works for you so don't let other don't let other people influence you do what is work what works for you do what makes you happy and i've preached that often enough so i'm going to get off that soapbox <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I just, well, it just bothers me when I read things on, on groups that, oh, you're doing that wrong, or you're doing this wrong, or no, you shouldn't do it this way, or you, you have to do it that way. And the answer is, no, you don't. No, you don't. There are maybe some. Well, no, I can't. I can't say that. I was going to say maybe there are some best practices, but the whole bottom line is this is a hobby, people. This is for your enjoyment. This is, you know, 
something that should make you happy and not cause you stress. So stop comparing yourself to other people and stop letting other people influence what you do and how you do it. That's my words of wisdom for today. <laughs> oh, let's see. What else do I have to jabber on about today? I did have something else that just that popped in my head and it it kind of left as soon as it popped in. <sighs> Happens all the time. Happens to me a lot. <laughs> Like, oh, I, I need to remember to uh, talk about that. And then I go, hmm, what was that I wanted to talk about? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what it was now. It has totally, totally left, gone. <laughs> How many does that? How many of you does that happen to? You have that thought. It's right there. And then the, the next thing you know, it just flits away <laughs> as quick as it came in your head. <laughs> okay. But now there was another conversation I was having with another person that does videos. And... I asked her, so I'm going to um, put it out here as a question of, I know there there's a lot of people who do their stitching on some kind of a frame, whether it be a scroll frame, a Q-snap, um, a hoop, but they have some sort of a piece of equipment that they use when they're stitching. And then there are those that um, stitch in hand. And I haven't quite figured out how. I mean, I can stitch in hand if it's something smaller. I can do that. I can, if it's something smaller and it's over two, I can do the sewing method fairly decently. I mean, it's, there's always a little bit of issue with tension, but... You know, if I practice it more, that would probably not be as much of an issue as I think it is now. But my question is, which do you prefer as a stitcher? What is your favorite method? Is it using a hoop or a Q-snap or a scroll frame or is it stitching in hand? And if you stitch these humongous <laughs> because I call Autumn Church humongous if you stitch these designs in hand which I know there are people out there that do I would love to know how you manage that being, how do you manage all that fabric? How do you manage or not maybe how do you manage the threads, but what method do you use? Do you stitch cross country? Do you park? And if you park, how how do you manage all those hanging threads? 
I just, I personally have a hard time wrapping my head around that. There's part of me that would love to be able to, or would love to stitch in hand because that makes it more portable than stitching on a hoop or a frame. Well, a hoop is more portable, but and a Q-snap is relatively portable, but a scroll frame by all means is not. Okay, there's no more down there. And, uh, and I really don't want to park in the next in the next so I'm so I I am just I am just playing curious <laughs> what what you folks that stitch in hand and especially those that park how do you manage all the fabric and all the threads I'm curious Inquiring minds would love, love, love to know. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's just for for my own information, or I'm sure there's other people out there who wonder the same thing because I often see it as a question on a lot of the stitching board, uh, a lot of the Facebook groups of how do you handle your fabric? You know, where do you... Where do you, yeah, well, I mean, especially some of the, some of you folks that stitch, for example, um, on say 18 count fabric, and it's a design the size of say Autumn Church. I forget the exact dimensions, but it's no small thing. And on 18 count fabric, it's going to be absolutely huge. So that's a lot of fabric. So what, what do you, how do you do that? How do you, how do you manage that? Just food for thought. And is that, for some people, is that why you would use a frame? Oh, no, wait, I got two colors here. There we go. Is that why you use a frame? Because that makes it easier to manage the fabric. I mean... I see, okay, on smaller pieces, what I would do is roll my fabric in from the side to where I want to stitch. And if I'm more in the middle, I would roll it in from the other side so that I had room to go back and forth from front to back when stitching and not have the right-hand side fabric flopping all over the place and being in the way but that's for a smaller piece. So what do you do with all of that if you have a piece that's, say, over a yard wide and over a yard long? Where, what, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? I would love, love to know. Because if I'm going to bunch up, not bunch up, but even roll almost a yard of fabric into my right, my left hand because I'm stitching all the way on the right side, where if I was stitching in hand, I would start because I don't want to have to roll already stitched fabric because that would be even bulkier. But how do you hold all of that? I'm just curious. I'm just curious. 
you know, I, and this is all about, <laughs> this community is all about learning from each other. So I would love to know how people, how people do that. Because maybe just, maybe I'll pull my needle out of my fabric, but maybe I'd like to, I want to try that. Now, this piece is on 25 count, so it isn't as humongous as maybe some would be, but there are some out there that, wowzers, I don't know what they, I just don't know what they do with all that fabric. And that's something that I have never done, so I do not have experience with. And, you know, I try very hard just to talk about things that I know or I've learned from experience. So that be that. Well, I don't want to let this get too long today. Um... I just wanted to pop in and do a little bit of stitching with you. And it looks like we did close to a hundred, well, not quite a hundred stitches, about 75. So that's not too shabby considering we're, I'm doing row by row and parking and all that stitch by stitch and all that good stuff. So I think my friends with that, I'm gonna call it a day today and get this uploaded for you. Um, I will say I really have enjoyed watching all the um, end of year whip parades. Some of you, a lot of, most of you, all of you are doing some phenomenal projects. I truly have enjoyed watching all of those. It has been such fun and this is such a such a great community so yeah keep up the good work guys um i will be doing the next block on the hard hanger stitch along um next week i will have i will uh get that video done and posted so those of you who are stitching along with me on that piece look forward to that next week i think that is about the two week mark um so that we can can stitch along with that uh there was some <laughs> somebody asked me when i did my um when i showed the projects that i have started and carrying into the new year i showed my hardanger piece and <laughs> I didn't realize I had done it, but on that second block, which I have done on my piece, and I will demonstrate on a another piece of fabric, but I turned it a different direction than what is shown on the cover photo. And in all honesty, I did not even realize I did that. Probably I did it because in the book, the pattern book, the graph for those top three blocks is vert is placed vertically in the book instead of horizontally the way it is to be to be should. Okay, it's across. It's the top row across, but in the book it's shown vertically, and you're supposed to turn it to place things right. Well, I didn't turn it. I just looked at what stitches were there and what the, the number of threads were between stitches. And I just went ahead and stitched it only to start it in a different corner. So mine came out at a different angle than <laughs> what was supposed to be. But you know what? I'm just as happy with it. And I think actually I like it better. So there's nothing wrong. You can, people can start that block really in any corner they want. And all it does is change the direction because it's your rows of stitches are on a diagonal. So all it does is change the directions, the direction of your diagonal, which is really 
no big deal. <laughs> but that was fun. It was, uh, I was tickled that somebody picked up on that. And it was something I never even realized that I had done. So look for that next week. I'm going to be showing how to do that block next week. It's very easy. It is nothing but satin stitches, just like you would be making a cluster block. It is a double chain stitch, I think they call it now. Um, I'm not going to say this, the name of what I learned it by. Um, I think what they're calling it now is a double chain stitch, which is really, again, very easy. And it's eyelets. That's all it is. All it is. And the only thing new to people probably is going to be that double chain stitch. Again, another very easy square that looks so gorgeous when it's done and it's just made up of of simple stitches. So look for that next week. And with that, my friends, I am going to say ta-ta for now. I will see you next week. In the meantime, have a great weekend. And of course, you know what's coming next. What's coming next is remember the only rules in cross stitch are the ones you set for yourself. And love what you stitch and stitch what you love. So until my next, until the next time, my friends, I will see you then. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Oh.